welcome back to Visual Nova. In this video we're going to create a clean and professional card animation in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, step by step. First, open DaVinci Resolve. As you can see, I have already dragged some PNG files into the media pool, which we will use later in this animation. Now, right-click inside the media pool and select New Fusion Composition. Give your composition a name, I'll name it Card Animation, and then click Create. Next, drag this Fusion Composition from the media pool onto your edit timeline, like this. Now move to the Fusion page. Here you'll see that we have only one node by default, which is the Media Out node. First, we'll create the background. From the toolbar, add a background node and connect it directly to the Media Out node. Select the background node, then go to the inspector on the right side. In the Type option, change it from Solid to Gradient. Now, move to the Viewer window and adjust the gradient direction like this. Select the left gradient arrow, click on the color box and choose a color. I'm not using the color picker here. Instead, I'm entering exact color values so we get precise colors. After that, click OK. You can see that we now have a blue color at the bottom. Next, select the right gradient arrow, go to the color option again, and once more I'll enter specific color values. Click OK. Now you can see that we have a red color on the top and blue on the bottom, which creates a really nice color combination. The red and blue gradient background works very well for motion graphics. Finally, adjust the red color slightly toward the center, like this. And now, our beautiful gradient background is ready. Now we'll add another background node and connect it to the previous background like this. Next, add a rectangle node and connect it to this new background using the blue input. Go to the viewer window and start shaping the rectangle like a card, the way I'm doing here. We need to create three passport size cards, so adjust the shape according to that size and position. Once you're done shaping it, go to the inspector on the right side and increase the corner radius. This will smooth out the edges and give it a proper card-like look. Now, select the background node and change its type to gradient. Go back to the viewer and adjust the gradient direction like this. First, change the bottom color. Open the color box and again, I'll enter exact color values to keep things precise. Click OK. Now, change the top color the same way by entering values just like we did before. Click OK. As you can see, both colors are white, but the top one is slightly brighter and the bottom one is slightly darker, which adds depth to the card. Now, we'll add a drop shadow to make the card pop out from the background. Press Ctrl plus Shift plus Spacebar, search for drop shadow and add it. Connect the drop shadow node to the rectangle node, like this. Select the Drop Shadow node, then go to the Inspector and set Shadow Strength to 0.228 Blur to 0.709 You can see that a subtle shadow has been added to the card. You can always adjust the strength depending on your preference. Next, select the second background node, press Ctrl plus Shift plus Spacebar. Search for Glow and add a Glow node. Go to the Inspector and set the Glow amount to 0.685. I think this looks really nice. Finally, select the second background again and slightly push the gradient downward. And now our first card is ready. Now to create the second and third cards, we'll grab all the existing nodes from the first card and paste them here. Next, connect the last glow node to the previous merge node, and do the same with the glow node for the second card. Now, adjust the position of all three cards in the viewer window. To align them precisely, right-click in the viewer and enable guides. This helps us position the cards properly as you can see. Once the cards are aligned, disable the guides by right-clicking in the viewer again. Now let's animate the cards. Select the first card's merge node, go to the inspector, and drag the center Y value downward until the card moves off-screen. Set the playhead at the start, and add a keyframe for center Y. Move the playhead to 20 frames, and bring the card back to its original position. Enable Motion Blur in the Inspector and set Quality to 3. You can adjust this value as needed. Next, move the playhead back to the start, select the second card's Merge node, and animate it exactly the same way as the first card. Do the same for the third card, ensuring all positions and values are identical, so the three cards animate simultaneously and smoothly. Once the animation is ready, Open the Spline Editor, select Merge 3, Fit to Zoom, 
select all keyframes, press S and smooth them out. Repeat this process for the other two cards. Now play the animation. You'll see all three cards moving from bottom to top simultaneously, it looks perfect. Next we'll add logos to the cards. Start with the first card, drag the DaVinci logo PNG from the media pool to the fusion timeline, and connect it to the card's merge node. Add a transform node between the logo and merge node for easy positioning and animation. In the inspector, reduce the logo size and position it above the card using center Y. To animate the logo, set size to 0 and angle to minus 90, then add keyframes for both. Move the playhead to 30 frames, set size to 0.250, and reset the angle as needed. Open the spline editor and smooth just the size. Turn off the spline editor. Next, add the second logo, After Effects. Connect to the second card's merge node. Now I'll adjust the size and keep it exactly the same as the DaVinci Resolve logo. To do that, I place it directly on top of the DaVinci logo and match the size visually. Once the size is matched, I move it back and place it on top of the second card. Now let's animate this logo. Before that, I'll slightly rearrange my Fusion node timeline so we have enough space to add new nodes properly. Now, add a Transform node between the Logo node and the Merge node, like this. With the Transform node selected, go to the inspector on the right side. Set the size value to 0, and set the angle value to minus 90 degrees. Now move the playhead to frame 20, and add keyframes on both size and angle. After that, move the playhead to frame 30. Here, set the size to 1 and reset the angle back to 0. Now open the spline editor. From here, I'll smooth only the size animation just like this. Once done, close the spline editor. Now using the same method just like we added, positioned and animated the first two logos, we'll repeat the exact same process for the third logo, keeping the same position, same angle and same animation timing. Now let me play this for you. As you can see, all three cards and logos are animating perfectly and smoothly. Next, we'll add numbering to the cards. For that, I'll first clean up my fusion timeline a bit to create space for new nodes. Now, select the nodes of all three cards, right-click and group them. This will make it much easier for us to manage and work with the nodes going forward. Now we will add a text node and connect it to the first card group, like this. Select the text node, go to the text box on the right side and type, 01. Now open the color panel and choose black as the text color. Next, change the font. I will use the default font bond shrift. Increase the font size and then position the text properly on the card using the viewer window, just like this. Now move the playhead to frame 15. Go to the shading tab, set the opacity to 0 and add a keyframe. Then move the playhead to frame 25 and set the opacity to 100%. To make the animation smoother, open the spline editor, Enable the text animation, click Fit to zoom, select the keyframes and press S to smooth them. Now turn off the spline editor. Next, we will add another text node and connect it to the same card group merge node. Go to the text box and type only a hashtag. Set the color to black, then adjust the position and size according to the card layout. Move the playhead to frame 15, set opacity to 0 and add a keyframe. Then move to frame 25 and set the opacity to 100%. Again, open the spline editor, smooth the animation just like before and turn it off. Now play the animation. You can see the hashtag and number appearing smoothly on the card. To add a bit more life we will rotate the hashtag slightly. Move the playhead to the last animated frame, which is frame 25. Go to the transform settings and add a keyframe on the Z rotation axis. Now move the playhead to frame 35 and set the Z rotation to minus 10 degrees. Open the spline editor. Smooth only the Z rotation, then turn the spline editor off. Play it again. It looks really clean and stylish. Now to add numbers and hashtags to the other two cards, simply copy both text nodes from group 1, paste them. Connect them to group 2. Select the number text and change 01 to 02 because this is the second card. If the text goes outside the card, slightly reduce the tracking. Repeat the same process for the third card.
Copy both text notes. Connect them to group 3. Change the number to 03. Now play the animation. You can see that. Card 1 represents Da Vinci Resolve. Card 2 represents After Effects. Card 3 represents Premiere Pro. All three cards are now smoothly animated and well aligned. In the final step we will add ratings to the cards. For this I will drag a star PNG from the media pool. Now, connect the star PNG node to the merge node of the last text for the first card like this. To control its size and animation, add a transform node between the star PNG and the merge node. Then from the inspector on the right side, decrease the size of the star like this. Now, create a little space in your fusion node area, because we will be adding more nodes. To position the star accurately, zoom in the viewer window so it becomes easier to place it properly. As you can see, I'm placing the first star on the top right corner of the first card. Now, to add the second star, simply copy the same star PNG node and its transform node. Connect this duplicated star to the merge node of the first star like this. Go to the viewer window and manually adjust the position of the second star, placing it next to the first one. Take your time here and align it properly. Now repeat the same process for the third star. Duplicate the star PNG and transform node again. Connect it to the previous star's merge node, and then set its position manually in the viewer window. As you can see, all three stars are now aligned one by one on the first card. Now we will animate the stars. Move the playhead to 30 frames. Now we set size 0. Set angle minus 90. Add keyframes on both sides and angle. Now do the same thing for the second star, using exactly the same values and add keyframes. Repeat the same steps for the third star as well. Make sure all stars have the same size values so the animation stays consistent. Now move the playhead to 40 frames. Now we set size 0.017. Set angle equals 0. Apply these values to the first star, then repeat the same values for the second and third stars. Now open the spline editor. Select the size and angle curves of all three stars and smooth them, just like I'm doing here. After smoothing, turn the spline editor off. Now play the animation. You can see that all three stars animate smoothly on the first card. Now for the second card we only need two stars. Simply copy two star nodes from the first card and paste them into group 2, connecting them to the second card's merge node. Adjust their positions if needed. Because this card represents After Effects, we are giving it a two star rating. For the third card, Copy only one star node and connect it to group 3. Position it properly on the card. This card represents Premiere Pro so we give it a 1 star rating. Fit the viewer and play the animation. As you can see, our motion card animation is now fully complete. Stars were added one by one. Each star was aligned separately. Animation stays clean, smooth and professional. I've explained this in a simple and beginner friendly way so you can easily recreate this animation step by step. If you want the project file or PNG assets for practice, let me know in the comments and I'll add them in the description. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.